look at your neighbor and tell them good to see you very important give us John chapter 8 and verse 31 John 8 that one You can write somewhere investment of time. We are looking at how to enhance our spiritual muscle and how to get divine intervention. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. I want us to read that scripture together. I want to go? Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. The key point there is part B where he says, if you continue in my word, if you continue in my word, if you continue in my word, then you are truly my disciples if you look at Isaiah chapter 11 uh, we can check somewhere in uh, verse maybe you can check verse 14 of 16 actually 16 Isaiah 11 16 the Bible says and there shall be an highway for the remnant of his people. There will be a highway. Somebody say a highway. God will create a highway for some people. Who are those people? His remnant. Who are those people that God will create a highway for? His remnants. Remnants are people that are left. After everyone else. They sat God. There are those that remain faithful. There are those that regardless of how dangerous our times uh, our time is, there are those people that will stick in the presence of God, remain in the presence of God. And, and those are the people that God says it shall create there shall be a highway for them let there be a highway in your life and it's not talking about doors it's talking about a highway it's not just talking about making a way for you he says he will make a highway for you if you remain faithful if you remain with god somebody say i will remain with god Please say like you mean it. Say I will remain with God. Psalms 46 and verse 10. The Bible says be still and know that I am God. Remaining in the presence of God for long with no hurry is the only way to know God. It is the only way to know God. You can't know God in books. You can only know God with time. With what? with time everything else can be accelerated but you cannot or accelerate um, uh, experience experience cannot be expedited experience cannot be accelerated 
you can accelerate education but you cannot uh, expedite or accelerate um, um, uh, experience are you understanding me yes yes very very important so for the only way for you to know god the only way for you and i to know god is through time is by spending time and enough time for that matter without being in a hurry so that you can be able to know him so that you can be able to know him psalms is written by one of the writer of psalms is david and david was a king the other writer uh, was moses and moses was a great prophet a great man of god mm. and a uh, psalm and uh, david here says that uh, that uh, that uh, if you want to know god he had walked with god for some time and he had realized that for you to be able to know god you need to spend some ample time with him you need to spend some quality time with god people who rush into the presence of god and out they never get to know god they never get to know god but for you you will know god i say for you you will know god so many people grow weary they grow tired very quickly but if you really want to see God in your life, you really have to invest time in the presence of God. In the presence of God. Four things to remember. Four things to remember. Number one, God operates differently from us. God works differently from us. As we are waiting for God, it is important you know that he operates from different frequency he operates from a different dimension he operates from a different mm, from a different realm he doesn't operate like us he doesn't do things the way we do them and so it will be wrong for you to expect god to align himself with your patterns and with your schedules and uh, with your timeline it is not important to push god or to force god uh, to fit in your pattern to fit in your timeline to fit in your timeline it is not possible don't try to do that before you try to push god you need to know his will you need to know what his will you got to know his will psalms 46 verse 10 psalms 46 verse 10 give us from nlt so before you try to push god to come when you want to appear when you want to come when you want you must understand his will you must try first of all to understand his will the bible says the bible says that uh, only i can tell you the future before it even happens everything i plan will come to pass for i do whatever i wish that is god uh, speaking that way so it is important for you before you do anything before you try to push god to fit in your schedule you understand that he says everything i plan will come to pass but I do whatever I wish. I, I, I can tell you the future before it even happens. KJV says that he declares the end from the beginning. He declares your end. He knows your end before the beginning. Even before you are born. He knows when you will get that job. He knows when you will get married. He knows when you will get children. He knows when you will become successful. So he knows your life. He has planned for your life. And he knows when things will happen in your life. There is no need of dying trying to push God. There is no need of, of dying trying to push God. Hmm? Trying to push God. Mungu sana. Lift up your hand and say my father my God. 
help me to be patient. Say again, help me to be patient. So when waiting on God, don't expect him to do things your way and in your timeline. God comes in his time because he knows the end from the beginning. He comes uh, he comes in his time. 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 Mm, he comes in his time. Don't try to push God or to force God to enter your program. If you do that, you are looking for frustration. You are looking for frustration. You will be so much frustrated. So much frustrated. So much frustrated. There is this brother who admired a certain girl, a certain sister in church. And uh, he went for prayer and fasting. He went into a certain cave to pray and fast. He stayed there for 21 days, praying and fasting that this girl will become a wife. This sister will become a wife. For how many days? 21 days, praying and fasting. After 21 days, he was so thin and so shaggy, he came back and called the lady, called the sister for a date somewhere. And when they went for that date, when she, he expressed his desire and his intention to the girl, the girl told him, I'm sorry, I love you also, but I am already taken. You are too late. After 21 days of prayer and fasting, and believing God that this one will be my wife, you know, that brother somehow became mad. He almost went crazy. He dropped everything down, including the Bible, and he concluded there is no God. He concluded there is no God. As a matter of fact, from that time, he was a man that was moving so much with God. So much with God. Uh, this is a man I know. And from that time, the man backslidden went to... went back to his Ushago, looked for a girl that she, uh, he, was, uh, he was dating long time before he got saved. Akaskia alihamia mahali kwingine. And he followed her there. And uh, <laughs> he later found out that uh, she had even been married by somebody else. Uh, but wakachana. And then she had become very rich. And uh, she, he went na akaolewa brother akaolewa na huyo sister and uh, <laughs> yeah because the the girl was so rich so hakuna vile yeye angemuoa in other words what i'm trying to say here is that uh, don't try to push god to enter into your program you enter into god's program you do what enter in god's program there are some things that we are trying to ask god to do in our lives but because he can see the future, he can see the end. He can see the end. Probably God knew that this girl was not supposed to be the wife of this brother. Hmm? And, and today, as we are talking, because God's ways are different. God's ways are different. Today, as we are talking, the man, even after making that mistake, he became a pastor. Glory to God. Let's appreciate our Jesus for his mercies. You know, he's a merciful God, eh? Today is a pastor with KAG. Yeah, today is a pastor with, with KAG. And uh, they have now used the money that the girl had uh, accumulated even to do a lot of things in church. God can see the future from the beginning. He can see your end from the beginning. Are you listening to me? So there is no need of trying to push God and praying some crazy prayers. Praying a hundred days for nothing. You're going to be just uh, destroy your, um, harm your, your, your health and your body for nothing. So God operates differently for, from all of us. That is the first point. The second point I want to point out to us is that uh, God knows why he is waiting. God knows why he's not coming right now. God knows why he's not answering your prayer right now. God knows why he cannot and he should not answer your prayer. Let me say that again. God knows why he's not answering your prayer right now. God knows why 
He cannot answer your prayer right now. God knows why he should not answer your prayer right now. He knows why he's not answering. He knows why he cannot answer. And he knows why he should not answer your prayer right now. He heard your prayer and you are a good person. You've prayed in faith and by faith. Everything about you is okay. But God knows why he's not answering. He knows why he should not answer. And he knows why he cannot answer. He knows why he cannot answer. And he knows why he should not answer. Hmm. Lift up your hand and say, Father, I pray. Help me to know your will. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, the Bible says that we know that all things work together for good. All things work together for God for good. There is something you really want happened happening in your life, but it is never happening. It is for your good. Did you hear what I said? It is for your good. Uyo mtoto mshike ache kui disrupt watu. Watu watu wana muangalia. Na kikata kushiko na mfunya kidogo. Hallelujah. Bwana sifiwe sana. You know? Yes. God knows why he should not answer your prayer. He knows why he should not answer your prayer. But eventually he will answer. Eventually he will do something in your life. I say eventually he will do something in your life. You know, but as for now, everything is working for your good. Everything is working together. Even coronavirus, the third wave is working together for your good. Even that corona that everybody is fearing, it is working for your good. For your good. All things work together for our good. Even that delay is for your good. That delay is for your good. You may not even know, but it is for your good. It is for your good. Joseph must have wondered why God was not rescuing him when the brothers were throwing him in the, in the well. He must have cried to God. He must have prayed so much. He must have cried so loudly. Why have you deserted me, O God? Why are you not saving me? He must have wondered why am I praying and God is not answering me. And the other night he showed me the world bowing to me. Even my brothers were bowing to me. And today they want to kill me. Today they are here killing me. The same people God showed me bowing to me. And he must have wondered. David, David. You know, the Israelites, King Saul and the Israelites must have wondered why God was taking too long to answer their, their cry. When Goliath was, uh, when Goliath was uh, threatening him and gloating and insulting them, insulting even God. They must have wondered why is God not avenging us? Why is God not listening to this man? Blaspheming God, insulting God. Can't you hear that this man? I can't you see that this man deserves a slap from heaven? Why don't you release fire from heaven? And they must have prayed, they must have prayed that this man will die. And maybe even the pastors that day, maybe they say that this, this man will not last the, the whole day, he will die by tonight. But he stayed there for how many days? For 40 days. For how many days? For 40 days. And they must have been wondering. Even after praying and fasting. We fasted the other week. Seven days. We fasted this week. Three days. And yet God is not answering our prayer. What is happening? And if you didn't have enough faith. You would have dropped your Bible. And you would have said I will never go to church again. You would have said I will never be born again. Again. I will never be saved again. I will not return to God again. Sometimes when our 
answers delay. Sometimes we feel like uh, we should not even be born again. It's like our God is not true. It's like the word of God is not true. It's like everything the pastor tells us is not true. But I'm here to tell you God knows why. And whatever delay you are facing, whatever delay you are experiencing, it is also for your good. Are you listening to what I'm saying? It is also for your good. It is working for your good. If God had answered Joseph when they were throwing him in the well, Joseph would never have gone to Egypt and he would never have become the prime minister in Egypt. They would never have bowed to him. His dreams would never have become a reality. But the, the fact that God delayed it was actually working for his dreams. It was working for his good. Is there something that God has delayed to do in your life? God is using that delay. God is using that delay. I'm saying God is using that delay to work out your miracle, to work out your future, to work out something in the future. He's using that delay for your good. Hallelujah. Lift up your hand and say, I will wait. Say again, I will wait. If God, can you imagine if God had answered King Saul together with the people that were praying for Goliath to die? David would never have been known. The reason David was known was because after 40 days, he came and fought Goliath. And he killed Goliath after 40 days. Had God answered their prayer day one or day two or day three, David would never have become a king of Israel. We would never have known David. So some of the things that are happening in your life, some battles you are fighting today, some battles you are wondering why God is not fighting for you. It is because he will use those battles to make you popular. He will use those battles to make you very famous. I pray that God will use your situation to popularize you. To make you very famous in the name of Jesus. So we need to wait. Look at your neighbor and tell them please wait. Lift up your hand and say I will wait. Say again I will wait. Say again I will wait. Lift up your hand and say my father my God. God, give me the grace to wait. Give me the grace to wait. So God knows why he's waiting. He knows why he's waiting. It is God's time that is the best. That is what we say. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 11. The Bible says that in God's time, in his time, he makes everything beautiful. In whose time? In his time not in your time not in your time yes maybe there is a deadline but that is not the time God is supposed to come God comes in his time not in your deadline maybe it is becoming night maybe your deadline has even passed but that is not God's time God's time everything must be beautiful God's time everything will work out for you God's time everything will be will be looking good for you in God's time he will lift you in God's time you will go to that university in God's time you will get married in God's time you will go for you will do business and business will uh, will will succeed you know in God's time everything is gonna be beautiful lift up your hand and say my father say again my father this night help me to know your time help me to wait on your time help me to wait for your time when you go ahead of God everything is ugly when you go ahead of God everything becomes ugly but when you go in the time of God everything is beautiful people will be willing to help you people will favor you you will realize there is a lot of grace you will realize that everybody is comfortable with you because it is God's time I say it is because it is God's time when you go ahead of God there will be struggle when you go ahead of God there will be struggle when you go in the direction 
direction God has not sent you. God has not allowed you. He has told you to wait here. And then you start going this way. There will be a lot of struggle. There will be a lot of crisis. There will be a lot of danger. Like the time of Jonah. Jonah was told by God, I want you to go to Nineveh. And he decided to go to Tarshish. There was a lot of struggle. There was a lot of danger. You will not encounter struggle. If you stick in the way of God. If you stick in the time of God. There will be no struggle for you. You need to just wait on God. We need to wait on God. Maybe everything in our lives is very hot. Maybe the climate around us. The weather around us. Does not allow us to wait. But I'm here to pray for grace. I pray that you will receive grace. You will be able to wait. I say you will be able to wait. I say you will be able to wait. I say you will be able to wait. Even in the midst of that fire. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego must be been wondering why is God not coming? Why is God not coming? And they were tied. They were tied and all this time they are wondering now God, this fire, you want Want us to enter into this fire and the way we have preached to you the way we have stood with you the way we have served in the church the way we have been faithful paying tithes in church how can you let us enter this fire how can you le let us enter this fire and some of us we are wondering why are you allowing this to happen in our lives I am here to tell you that God has a plan I say God has a plan I say God has a plan. He is never late. I said God is never late. He will still come. He may not come in your time, but he will come in his time. And when he comes in his time, everything is going to be beautiful in your life. I say everything will be beautiful in your life. Lift up your hand and say, my father, my God, help me realize my time. Help me realize your time. God will still come. I said God will still come. Our God will still come. We have served God. And we wonder why we are still struggling. We wonder why we are still suffering. And the way we have stood with God. The way we have served God. I am here to let you know that God has a plan. I say God has a plan and that plan will come to pass very very soon that plan will come to pass very soon hallelujah number three please sit down and write this even when God is silent he is still with you even when God is silent he is still with you even when God is silent he is still with you many times we call on God, we pray, and all we hear is silence. We call on God, we pray, and all we hear is silence. You give, and you give, and you give, and you give. Some brother was telling me that every time I give in church, something bad happens in my life. I want you to know that the devil is always trying to make you feel like God is not to be trusted. The devil is always looking to, to convince you that God is never to be trusted. The word of God cannot be trusted. But if you can remain faithful, if you can remain faithful, you will still see God. You will still see God. He says that be still and know that I am God. You just need to remain faithful. You just need to remain faithful. Even when there is silence. God is still together with you. I say God is still together with you. For 25 years, 25 years, Abraham waited for God. For how many years? For 25 years. And if it was you, you would have said, you know God, I'm even late. I'm 75 years old. So this child you are promising me should have come like yesterday. So I want him today. I want him this year. I want him this year. But the Bible says that, that even again, even when there, is, there was no hope because his body, because his body was wearing out, 
his body was too weak. He was too old. The wife was too old. They were 100 years old. 100 years old. That is when God came. After waiting for 25 years. He looked at his body and he was wondering when God will come. Will this God ever come? Can you imagine God giving you a promise? And that promise stays for 25 years. If God tells you that you will get married. And then you wait for 25 years. Eh, will you still be waiting? Eh, will, <laughs> will you still be waiting? Eh, you know. <laughs> some of us here. We will not wait. If God told you. I will make you a millionaire. But you will have to wait for 25 years. Will you believe that? Will you wait on God? You know that is the question. Will you wait on God? And God is listening even to your heart right now. May God listen to you. <laughs> God is listening to you right now. He knows what you are saying. For Abraham. He waited for 25 years. No matter how, how much. And how long you wait. God still has a plan for you. Did you hear what I said? It is never too late for you. If it was not late for Abraham, it cannot be late for you. So some of us, we feel like it's like we've wasted a lot of time. It's like we don't understand God. It's like we have done something wrong. That's why some things are not happening in our lives. I'm here to let you know you've not done anything wrong. I said you've not done anything wrong. You just have to wait on God. It is only that God's time has not arrived. But very soon that time is coming. Very soon I see you very happy. I see your testimonies coming. I see your miracles arriving. I see your testimony arriving I say I see your testimony arriving very soon you will register your testimony very soon you will see your miracle I say very soon you will see your miracle very soon you will build your house very soon you will drive your own car very soon you will own your own shop it is happening sit down it is happening Somebody say, I refuse to give up. Say again, I refuse to give up. Romans chapter 4, verse 18 to 22. Give us from NIV. Very important. Romans chapter 4, 18 to 22. Romans 4, 18 to 22. The Bible says, against all hope, Abraham, against all hope, akukukwana tumaini hata kidogo. Against all hope, Abraham in hope, believed and so became the father of many nations he believed and became he believed and became what you believe is what you become what you believe is what you become he believed and so became the father of many nations what do you believe do you believe that god will come if you believe that god will come and bless you that is what will happen in your life he believed and so became the father of many nations just as it had been said to him so shall your offspring be without weakening in his faith he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead even hata mwili yake haikuwa inafanya kazi viungo za mwanaume zilikuwa hazifanyi kazi for 25 years and he's still waiting for a baby and even he cannot even operate as a man he cannot operate like a man since he was about a hundred years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead at a womb that womb of Sarah could not bear any child but they still believed they still believed. Ata biashara ikikufa. Mungu anaweza kutumia. Hiyo biashara imekufa. Akubariki. Are you listening to me? That same idea that could not work last year. It can be used by God this year. To bring you to your destiny. May the Lord use something that is about to die in your life. To bring you to your destiny. To take you to your destiny. In the name of Jesus. Yet he did not waver. Somebody say I will not waver. He did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God. But he was strengthen in his faith. May the Lord strengthen your faith tonight. I said may the Lord strengthen your faith tonight. And he gave glory to God. He gave glory to God. In all this time he was glorifying God. Hakuacha kuja church. 
aliendelea kuja church na akifika church hakukuwa amenuna alikuwa bado anamshukuru Mungu alikuwa bado anamtukuza Mungu hata kama hakukuwa na pesa bado aliamua kumtukuza Mungu hata kama jalipa renta he was a kind of a believer that would come to church hata akiwa na shida you will not know i pray that god will help you to become such a believer may you become such a believer hata wakati nyumbani kuna kaji when you come to the house of god you will say like david i am glad that they told us to come to church i am glad that i'm in the house of god somebody shout hallelujah somebody shout hallelujah paul say that rejoice in the lord i say again rejoice so we are supposed to rejoice in every situation in every situation being fully persuaded that god that this is the reason he was always happy he knew he knew in his knowing tell your neighbor i know in my knowing that i'm a great person tell them i know in my knowing that i'm a millionaire say i'm a millionaire i may not look like it but i know in my knowing that very soon i will do something mega i will do something mega yes he was fully persuaded that god had power to do what he had promised god had the power to do what he had promised this is why it was credited to him as righteousness that is why he was seen as a righteous man heaven will see you as a righteous man i say heaven will see you as a righteous man look at your neighbor and tell them god knows your life number four write this down god is still faithful even when he's not visible is still faithful even when he's not visible number three was even when god is silent he is still with you 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 at the cross jesus agonized for six hours how many hours for how many hours six hours he was crucified in the morning at nine in the morning he died in the evening at three o'clock in the evening how many hours six hours six hours agonizing in pain he must have been calling god and god was not answering so even in the midst of silence god is still together with you did you hear what i said he waited for god to answer god was not answering until he said eloi eloi lama sabakithani why my god my god why have you forsaken me why have you even jesus at some point he felt like god was too silent too quiet it is possible sometimes we can feel like god is too quiet father hey father send me help father open a door for me to get a job and you've prayed you've prayed you've prayed you've prayed you've prayed now it's three months and nothing is happening even in the midst of silence god is still together with you i say god is still together with you and he still has a plan for you praise the lord there are times when god keep quiet there are times when god keeps quiet and it is also for our good had he come to rescue jesus from the cross we wouldn't be saved we wouldn't be saved so god had looked at us so everything god is doing in your life it is for a reason and for a good reason for a reason and for a good reason lift up your hand and say thank you jesus thank you for your plans thank you for your plans in my life on your feet and i want you to tell god thank you for your plan